You are welcome to class. Today we are going to be seeing how to write a recurring decimal as a fraction and how to find the square root of a number. So first let's see the definition of a rational number. So simply a rational number is a number that can be written in form of a fraction. Let's say a over b. And we should know that our b cannot be zero. So let's see some example of rational numbers. Okay, they're right there for us to see. Now let's go to irrational number. So when we say a number is irrational, it means that number cannot be written in form of a fraction. Okay, also let's see some examples of irrational numbers. Okay, we have them right there. Those are just few. Now, pi is an irrational number, though we use 22 over 7 as an approximate value of pi. Now, let's proceed. Recurring decimals. Okay. So, we say 1 divided by 3, which is 0 0.33333. It continues infinitely. Now, we can write that in a short way, we just say 0 0.3 with a dot on top of the 3, meaning 3 is repeated. Now, 314 divided by 99 is 3.171717, so 17 is repeated. There is a short way we can write that, so we say 3.17 with a dot on 1 and 7. Okay, so every recurring decimal can be written as a fraction. So the example we are going to see will help us to understand that. So we are asked to write 6.7 with a dot on top of the 7 as a rational number. So we should write it in form of a fraction. Okay. So the first thing we are going to do, we are going to represent that number with a variable. So let x be 6.7 with a dot on the 7. So it means x is 6.7777 like that continually. So let's call that equation 1. Now, since 7 is just a digit that is repeated, we are going to multiply equation 1 by 10. So we we'll have 10 times x, which is uh, 10x, and 6.777 times 10 is 67.777. So we are going to call this equation 2. Remember, we are looking for x. So we we'll subtract equation 1 from equation 2. So we we'll have 10x minus x equals to 67.777 minus 6.777. Okay. 10x minus s is 9x. And when we we'll do the other subtraction, we we'll get 61. So we we'll divide both sides by 9 to make x stand alone. So s is 61 over 9. Okay. Now let's proceed. To square root of a number now the square root of perfect squares will always give us a whole number so when we pick each of the whole numbers and we multiply them by themselves we get what are called perfect squares those are examples of some perfect squares okay square root of 6.25 can also be simplified to 5 over 2 okay so we are going to see how to find the square root of irrational numbers using the method of trial and improvement. Okay, so let's see that with an example. We are asked to find the value of the square root of 13 correct to two decimal places. 13 is not a perfect square, so let's see how to do that. So 13 is not a perfect square, but 13 lies in between two perfect squares, which are 9 and 16. So the square root of 13 will also lie between square root of 9 and 16. So square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4. So first, we'll first try 3.6. We'll square 3.6 and we'll get 12.96. This is too small. Now again, let's increase. So we'll try 3.7. 
we square it and we get 13.69 this is too large meaning that the square root of 13 is going to lie in between 3.6 and 3.7 okay which is what we are seeing there so square root of 13 is between 3.6 and 3.7 so but 12.96 is closer to 13 than 12.69 so it means we are going to take this 3.6 so again we add a number for to the front so we'll say 3.61 square which is 13.03 can also say this is too large bigger than 13 okay let's try 3.62 and square it we get 13.10 which is even too large again so it means that 13.03 is closer to 13 therefore we can say that the square root of 13 is 3.61 to two decimal places you can check that with your calculator so right here have some assessment question for you thank you <laughs>